Hey everybody, Mike here with Everything About Concrete. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to stamp concrete. And specifically, how to stamp concrete with a border pattern. So, we cut in this border with a groover. And I've got some other videos that I've done that show you how to use a groover. What we're doing right now is we're just covering up that border. Because the we don't want the stamp pattern. We're doing an ashlar slate stamp. We don't want the grout lines from that stamp to go in the border section. We just want it to go in that middle section. So that's why we're kind of protecting it with that that white material. And that's just kind of like a plastic, real thin plastic material. So what I'm doing right now is I'm throwing on the release agent. And what that's for is it keeps the stamps from sticking to the, the concrete surface, the paste on the surface. And it also adds a secondary color when we're all done, when the slab's all done, it'll give it like an antiquing type color. So a little bit of that powdered stuff will get pressed into the surface with the stamp. And then most of it will end up just being washed off. Hey, in case you don't know me, my name's Mike Day. Uh, I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. We specialize in concrete stamping, concrete floors, slabs, pool decks, any type of concrete flat work. Uh, we do a lot of concrete repair. So if, if those are the kinds of things you like to learn about, then go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. I'm coming out with two to three videos a week about this kind of stuff, teaching you guys how to do it and what we do. Um, right now, what, what Darren's doing there is he's setting that first stamp. That's the most critical one. you got to make sure that one's perfect. Uh, if that one's off a little bit, if it's out of square with your with your boards or what you're going up against then the rest of the pattern is going to be out of square so you want to really really take your time make sure that's exactly where you want it before you start pressing it down into the concrete and we're getting both edges lined up perfectly and then it it won't run off the pattern as we continue to stamp I'm throwing more release agent on Again, this is an Ashler slate stamp. And this is all about timing, guys. You know, you gotta you gotta get on it with these stamps, especially if it's in the sun, when it's still quite soft. It, you know, that's too soft. The concrete's too soft to walk on. You'll sink down probably a quarter to three eighths of an inch if you step onto the concrete. But it's not too soft to walk on on those stamps. Those stamps are pretty rigid. So uh, if you get on it too late, you're going to have a hard time tapping the pattern into it. This Ashler Slate stamp has some, some pretty deep grout lines in it, so you definitely don't want to get on it late. You know, if you put the first two down and it seems just a little too squishy, then stop. Wait a few more minutes. What Luke is doing is he's using that textured roller just to put a little texture on the edge of that border so we don't have to tamp the stamp too hard on that edge. This this stamp comes with about nine different stamps with it and they're color coded so the green ones, the black ones, and the blue ones they all have a little bit different rock pattern underneath them so it doesn't keep repeating itself you can see Darren's just tapping that in with his hand. What we usually do is we'll lay down as many of the stamps as we can, all of them sometimes, depending on how the sun, you know, the sun plays a big part in how you stamp this thing. It's going to dry a lot faster in the sun than it does in the shade. I'll have links in the description, guys, about if you, if you like these kind of stamps, you know, you can go check them out. And then any other stamping tools that we use. If if uh, if you're looking to get into stamping, it's a pretty pretty lucrative business. I generally charge around fifteen dollars a square foot. You know and that includes the forming, includes the concrete, the color, the labor to pour and finish the concrete, the labor to stamp it, clean it, and seal it. So generally, it's around fifteen dollars a square foot. You can see I'm just lightly tamping that. We can get on this just just at the right time so we don't have to push too hard. You can almost just use your feet for the, 
to put the pattern down in the concrete. You can see what Luke's doing over there. He's just kind of slowly walking it in with his feet. This works really good with three guys. I mean, you can you can move right along pretty fast. That stamp that I'm just tapping in there, that's a really flexible one. That's why it doesn't have the handles on it. It's a little thinner than the other one, so you can go up against buildings, up against walls, up against pipes. You can flex it and really bend it if you have to. This slab, we didn't have to worry about that too bad. It was just pretty much a flat patio slab. You can see we're kind of working our way from the sun into the shade. There's a little corner of that that's going to be in the shade. And we're working our way the same way the sun hit it. You know, the sun came up from behind that house and started hitting that back corner first, and now it's worked its way more towards the house there. You can see the shade there. So that's it guys, once you have that first stamp down, you know, these stamps put set together almost like a puzzle, and you wanna make sure you you keep them this, on this pattern, you wanna keep them the same way, meaning the stamp pattern doesn't wanna rotate on each stamp. Each stamp locks together a certain way, and you keep it that same way the whole way through. These stamps we're using are actually from Butterfield Colors. Um, they have good stamps. Walt Tools has good stamps. So on this particular stamp, it has the word Butterfield on top of the stamp. And we just keep that word going the exact same direction every time we pick a stamp up and reset it. Yeah, so as, as we get the slab stamped, the patio stamped, I'm coming back and I'm just rolling a texture into the border. That roller is really good for just putting texture on. You don't have to press too, too hard. You just roll in the texture just like you're painting it in there almost. If you haven't used one of those rollers, I would definitely recommend getting one. They're good for going around columns going around pipes doing the edges you can see how easy it is to use that ashler slate pattern you can see it right there that's a really nice pattern too that's one of our more popular ones we do the color we put in the concrete we darken the concrete with a with like a dark gray color that was in the concrete so it came out of the truck that way and then we're throwing that charcoal release on it so it'll have like like a dark grayish with a with highlights of black after we seal it. When we put the sealer on, that's gonna really make those colors pop right out. So we've worked our way through the sun part and we're just waiting for that other edge of the concrete to dry up where the shade was before we can finish it off. It was a little too soft in the shade to keep going. Again, if you want to learn how to stamp concrete, guys, I mean, I'm coming out with more and more of these videos every week. Go ahead and down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification, too. That'll tell you when I come out with a new video. Most of the times I come out with a new video on Mondays and Fridays. You can see all that powder on there. So we'll come back. I mean, the next day, we usually come back and we lightly power wash all that powder off we use some dawn dish detergent with some water and we just flood that thing and we lightly scrub it almost like you're washing a car and then we wash all that powder off and then we let it dry again for another day at least another 24 hours and then we spray on a couple coats of acrylic concrete sealer You can see we're just slowly working our way to that corner that's in the shade. A lot of times, you know, if it's all in the sun, you don't have that much time to wait. You just got to go, go, go and get it done. 
there's a small window of time when you're going to get a nice pattern in it and when you're not, especially if it's in the sun. There's definitely a little bit of a learning curve to doing stamp concrete. If you're thinking of learning about this if or trying it, I would definitely try on something small first. I wouldn't tackle something probably not even this size. This was around 400 square feet. The most the three of us usually do is probably a thousand square feet at one time. And we're really hustling, the three of us. And you know, we've all been doing this for twenty over twenty years, stamp concrete. There's no going back and fixing it, so you gotta get it right the first time. What we're doing now is we're just touching up some of the grout lines. You know, we use a, as you can see, we use like a little four inch roller to do some of them and then I'm using that little wheel over there that works pretty good too sometimes when you pound the stamp into the concrete the paste will kind of get squished up in between the seams of the stamp so it's nice just to touch them up like that well that's it guys that's basically how you stamp concrete it's all about timing you know you got to get started at the right time and then just slowly work your way to the other end of the slab one stamp at a time get them all laid out there tamp in your pattern then pick it up reset it and just keep going